the Independent Investor Channel for our uh, update on Aduro Clean Technology. This is um, is and has been one of my very favorite companies to cover over the last couple of years, as well as an invest in. Uh, before we get into this video, I, I want all the viewers that catch this content, number one, to understand uh, how big this opportunity is and not to dismiss it. Uh, number two, please understand my position is that of a bullish share owner in the company. I am long the company. I've owned the company for um, over 24 months. I've lived through the evolution of the company, the transitions, the positive catalysts, uh, and it has been a, a fun ride thus far. My bottom line is I don't think we've seen anything yet. Um, I don't think that this company is known. Um, I think that uh, by nature of some consensus we have amongst the social media content creators looking to push this introduction out to the grander audience um, is met with some level of futility in that major exchanges are not paying attention, institutions, albeit are probably uh, in the know, um, but certainly waiting until uh, a more favorable um, upgrading or uplisting is is complete before Aduro gets its due attention. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for us? Uh, what does it mean with regard to uh, getting into the name now? Are you getting in late? Are you getting in early? These are some of the deliberations that uh, an important uh, stock evaluator, deliberator um, would would go through. And I, I want to separate the 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 haves and the have nots with regard to information. Those that have not the information on a duro cannot make a decision informed either way, one way or the other, to own the stock or or not. You just can't do it. But when you have individuals through social media, uh, Mariusz Skoniecznia, uh, as well as Penny Queen, um, I, I offer my content fairly frequently on a Duro just because it's incumbent upon investors to be made privy to at least the opportunity, okay? What you do with that opportunity is totally up to you. Um, um, whether or not you look to add this to your watch list, whether or not you look to engage in some level of of research, um, perhaps to the level of due diligence um, that 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 I believe I have done enough to justify my position, um, or the due diligence that I know Mariusz and Penny have done and are both long uh, in the company as well, but you get a different angle and a different twist as to what opportunity may reside in the future. And this is the portion that uh, gets the most scrutinized. Do we know by nature of historical review what Aduro has done? Um, we know what they're continuing to do. The toughest part when you're looking at evaluating stock and determining whether or not it makes sense from an investment thesis um, it is to put those tools together, put those thesis together. Uh, put what we know together and project in in some level of accuracy where a company may potentially go in the short, medium, and long term. Um, that is the portion where the landscape starts to spread out and you get people, detractors to the message who would suggest that based on a consensus and, and, and thesis, it does not make sense. Uh, as to what these guys are doing, and 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 therefore this this thesis would suggest that somehow the story is not going to work out. Okay, all open to deliberation, uh, all open to uh, suggestions. This is what makes markets, guys. In my particular assessment, I don't think we've seen anything yet on this company. Uh, I think that uh, certain schools of thought would suggest, well, just wait until they make money and then you can invest in the company. Uh, I think that's a huge mistake. Uh, that's just me. Uh, I know there's people out there that would suggest that perhaps maybe they're years away from making some level of uh, meaningful revenue. Mariusz just uh, gave a great breakdown on what the implication of our three uh, could mean through their licensing model as well as owning their own proprietary model to go and, and sell to the masses and scale up. Um, and I've always contended that to be the fact. Look, I, I look at Aduro as a billion-dollar company right now. Ah, you're crazy, Ryan. How is that justified? Well, 
look at the competition in the landscape that are receiving unfair um, valuations uh, in the tune of one, 1 1.5 to two and a half billion dollars that uh, have inferior technology and, and inferior processes, and they're up to their eyeballs in debt. So yeah, I, I guess it's unfair. I guess it's just as equally unfair to provide a market cap of a Duro less than $100 million, which I think is the greatest solution uh, of any solution that, that, that I've seen. Uh, don't take it from me. Take it from Eric Appleman, uh, who's had a chance to vet a myriad of different technologies and, and signed on with this very technology that we look to push out information on and that I would deem at this point a company where you haven't seen anything yet. Yes, we've had some appreciation in the stock over the last couple of years. I don't scoff at a 60% return over the last year, over year. I don't I don't look at the fact that 2024 has been fairly flat. We're going to talk about the stock uh, in a little bit in this uh, delivery here for our weekly address because I've never seen a stock act like a duro acts even on a a less than favorable exchange which mariush again has talked multiple times about that and whether or not you agree with him on that or not is your prerogative um i i've come full circle in understanding that the based on how the volume is pushed through on a duro and anemic 60 60 000 shares i mean there's no volume traded let's just be real on a duro on this current exchange zero um purchases of up over a hundred thousand shares which i am a share owner in that but micro purchases of you know ten thousand twenty five thousand could move the needle for no reason whatsoever than to acknowledge the buying activity on the stock alone it could have nothing to do whatsoever with the news news comes out on a duro and sometimes it sports a little bit of movement on the stock, and others it, otherwise it falls on deaf ears. Um, the the complex polymers, the cross link polymers announcement that just came over should have should have doubled the stock. It didn't. Why is that? It's because it does not have the the level of market penetration that it needs in way of awareness, and that's it. Nobody knows about the company. Um, I think some introductions have been made over the last couple of years, and I think just in uh, interviews that I've caught as of late, um, people are talking. There is churn in the industry. They're, they know that there are uh, uh, responsible producer mandates that are coming. There are penalties that are coming in the EO, EU to the turn of 1,000 euro per ton produced to say, look, you can't just openly produce this because we know by nature of statistics, the majority of what you produce is going to end up damaging our environment. So you have to take on some level of responsibility. Is there going to be some incentives to lower those tax penalties or avoid them altogether? Yes. Is there going to be a place where there hasn't been a place previously for the tons of plastic produced? I heard a staggering statistic just this week. We talked three or 400 million tons. I heard 450 to 500 million tons. We're tracking on an upward trajectory and we are marching toward absolute insanity in this industry in that historically for the last 10 decades, we, we have not been able to deal with the plastic that we produce. That's a fact, guys. You can deny it up and down. You can say that it's a farce. You can say that it's a conspiracy. You can say whatever you'd like. But I'm of the very, very grounded perspective and understanding that something has to be done. Whether or not that something is made possible in part or in a large part by a DuroClean Technologies it is a point to be argued. But... We have to do something with regard to the amount that's produced and the anemic amount that we are uh, uh, bringing back in into the circular economy, which is just an embarrassing 6%. The ma majority of the plastic that's produced are in ending up in waste fills um, and landfills, our oceans, and ending up being shipped for large premiums out to these third world countries that cannot handle this and are using archaic methods uh, to to melt down this plastic, which speaks to a, a, a completely different environmental impact there. But the the real perspective here is that you haven't seen anything yet on this company. Okay, does that mean that things are going to transpire tomorrow? 
does that thing mean that you're going to take a position in this company, let's say next week, and it's just going to magically work out for you the following week? Um, I, I don't engage in that dialogue and you can be rest assured that I don't promise uh, anything in way of future outcomes. What we typically try to do is evaluate the past, acknowledge the present, and look to speculate in the future. Okay, This is speculation when we're talking about the future. How will things transpire? Uh, will Aduro just succumb to being bought out because their technology is that good? The roadmap is proven out indefinitely. The, the roadmap to deal with an infinite stream of waste plastic using the Aduro reactor system uh, and potentially leveraging licensing or leveraging their reactor model uh, is, 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 is out. It's absolutely there, and it just needs to be followed along. How much time will it take to actually follow along that? We'll talk a little bit about that uh, when I talk about you know the the build out process here. But I want to bring your attention to to the addressable market, the technology, and the current valuation when we look to uh, evaluate the opportunity here with a DuraClean technology and, and what type of value it should garner now in the marketplace. But when we talk about the phase of the build out, I, I, I sense that there's some level of frustration because on the last interview that Penny did with, uh, Ofer Vikas, Ofer, uh, fielded some questions from some investors that want some answers now. They want them yesterday. They want them a month ago, et cetera, et cetera. Would be nice to have. Uh, I get it. Um, they are not there to be rendered based on the uh, protections that are in place, the non-disclosures that are existing with these current relationships. Um, and that's good enough for me. I, I don't. I don't want that to be compromised. I don't want that to be discussed. Um, quite frankly, I'm a share accumulator. It's the only company that I personally am buying right now. I'm dollar cost averaging markets, but I do that like riding my seatbelt. But as far as a conviction buy now in the market, no, I'm not buying NVIDIA. I'm not buying the, that, that company right now. I'm buying companies that have unlimited upside potential, but are, are trading right now at market cap less than $100 million. That's a Duro clean technology. The business over the next few years has to prove out. And I think we're in an interesting time right now that I deem the build-out phase and this build-out phase could last uh, for upwards of the next three years. And that puts us into that 2027 calculation where we start to put some of these pre-commercial and commercial reactors to work to start to render back uh, some revenues uh, against a company right now that has received their fun, uh, financing uh, through through uh, separate offerings. Okay, uh, and I like the way that they're financing the business right now, but it's an unsustainable model if we can't, you know, internally generate some revenue within the company. And I I do foresee that within the next couple of years. Could that path accelerate? Could the stock re-rate over that time? Could they uplist to another market? Could they bring on uh, other customers and collaborators, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. Are they going to add to the patent book? Yes. Are they going to bring on a collaborator the end of 2024? I believe that they are. These guys have had a track record of following through on the goal set year to year. So could there be a lot of positive developments toward that over the next three years? Yes. Is it going to move the stock? I don't know. That's for you guys to determine. But when we look to align the stars the way I'm talking about, look to evaluate the past, uh, present, and the future, um, it's only uh, logical to expect that the trajectory is going to continually slow moving upwards and to the right. And I believe we're sitting on a stock now that did you invest early, Ryan? Absolutely. Or investing early is the only way that I can ensure that I'm in on the ground floor. Have I got some appreciation in the stock? Yes. Have I been rewarded for my for my share uh, a, a, a accumulation? Yes. Because I think that across the board, the company deserves a premium valuation right now, not tomorrow, right now. 
based on the management, based on the technology, based on the 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 four-headed vertical monster that they have with regard to their product offering, which could break off into multiple subsets of product with deployment of a technology that is not a one-size-fits-all technology. All right. It can go into multiple applications here, guys. But for right now, it's easy for investors to look at this and dismiss this based on it hasn't happened yet. I'll invest when it happens. I think that's wrong. An evaluation to look at what Ryan just said, we're in the build out phase. Therefore, it's not an investable company right now. I think that's a mistake. It's not a company that I can invest in right now, Ryan, because they don't make revenues. I think that's a mistake. I think in the last couple of years, if I was going to summarize for you guys, when I started investing in Aduro Clean Technologies, it was before the Game Changer program was announced. That was the one collaborator at the time that I knew was um, in the wheelhouse of potential customers for Aduro. We have added five since then that we know of. We don't know by name, but we know is working with Aduro and many, many more who have shown an interest in this. And so, you know, the, the the slam dunk announcements have been a little bit lean, but the below the surface work toward the build out that I talk about have been monstrous. It's the analogy of looking at the, the iceberg, the top of the iceberg and what's going on below the surface is really what we're after here. And just couldn't be more pleased and share owners, whether or not we like to admit it or not, have been rewarded um, in, in a micro cap space that typically taketh away and not reward for time spent in a company where we look at it and we say, you know, this is not just a, a, a tradable asset in that you buy it and you try to get a couple of pennies of appreciation. Rather, this is a company that I can really sink my teeth into long term. And it has rewarded shareholders based on their uh, fiscal approach, um, their ability to be nimble, uh, their ability to protect. You know, look at the positive around the protection and how sincere Ofer and Eric and Altmena are in protecting the relationship that they have built up over their clients. It doesn't get any more serious than that. And for me as a share owner, I'll continue to be patient through a period where I believe that patience is probably the most prudent attribute to, to assess. Because do I think that Aduro is somehow going to throw a curveball into the market next week and announce some monumental uh, deal? I, I, I don't know. Could they? Uh, but, but am I expecting that? No. My, my expectation and application to this is to continue to smartly accumulate shares on the dips, uh, the dips far and few between. I'll talk about that next with the resilience of the stock. But you know, Penny's alluded to this a couple of times. I'm just going to continue to be patient because if the company is just going to continue to give me all of this fundamental bullish thesis on the company, but continue to be discredited, uh, undiscovered, uh, uh, unnoticed in, in the market, well, then that just benefits me. Um, now, for those that uh, you know frequent the message and get it, uh, th th there's th this is the major leagues. There's no other Aduro clean technology in the world. This is it. This is it. Th there, there's no uh, 10 other versions of Aduro clean technology. There's just one. This is it. This is the one that I own shares in. And this is the one that I disclose to you guys I own in the description below. You can review that position at your leisure. You can understand where my thesis comes from. Okay. I turn down lots of deals every single day as a guy who is solicited for my pulse on the market. Right now, my pulse of the market is simple. The grander market is teetering on some very, very interesting catalysts. It is an electric election year. Inflation is proving out to be significantly more sticky than originally thought with regard to this guaranteed six or eight rate cuts in 2024. I think we've scrubbed almost all of them at this point in understanding that the market has been resilient, but the so has the um, the the inflation. And, and I think with housing teetering on an adjustment, perhaps maybe or a digression down, which is going to put more of a pinch uh, on retail uh, retail spenders, 
um, then then those things are are what I see looming into the future. So am I pouring money into uh, an investment uh, thesis right now in the grander economy, or am I looking to pick my spots and looking to take uh, to take notice of these companies like Aduro that, yeah, may make be a couple of years out. I'm totally fine with that. When the when the stock moves to to three four or five dollars on the first re rate, um, I will have stopped long since buying the stock. But here, I don't put a lot of disparity between buying the company at sixty cents or buying the company at a dollar U.S. I just don't look at that range of disparity because I just I don't think either one of those acknowledge the true value in a duro right now. All right, let's talk a little bit about the stock. Uh, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not. I don't know if there's any methodology um, outside of just my general, um, I've covered stocks my whole life. Um, I watch markets every day. I enjoy it. Um, um, Ryan, you need to pick another hobby. I have lots of different hobbies, okay? Um, I just love the stock market and I love covering companies and I love covering companies, specifically ones that I invest my own money in. Aduro trades like no other stock I've ever seen, ever. I think as well as uh, three years ago, which if we were in different times, I think Aduro would have been subjected to some pretty, pretty atrocious market conditions. I think we've moved past that. Um, I think the dust is still, still settling over the carnage uh, that has been the microcap space over the last couple of years. I think there's going to be some massive profits that are made by that uh, acknowledgement that we are coming out of a dark period and that uh, microcap companies have really just been non-existent on the radar for the last four or five years. And that can happen. You can go through swoons of uh, being being irrelevant in the market. Why would you want to invest in this when you can invest in AMC and make guaranteed money overnight? Why would you want to invest in this when you can just buy NVIDIA and make guaranteed money? Um, that may be true. I in indirectly own NVIDIA in any number of a ha handful of half a dozen ETFs that I own. A good portion of that money is in NVIDIA with talks of NVIDIA turning over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I do see that happening. Um, it's usually been a stock killer when that happens because NVIDIA is not a value stock right now. NVIDIA is a growth company, and and I, I find it a little bit premature, and we'll see what the Dow board does with regard to the proposal, but I do see it happening. Um, I see them replacing uh, Intel on the Dow Jones, but uh, we'll see. I have no interest in putting dollars at $1,000 a share in NVIDIA right now. I have interest in buying a Duro, but I can tell you for somebody who's accumulated shares over the last couple of years, it has been very, very difficult to pick up Aduro shares, if not on the premium. Um, I wasn't buying at $1.20. I wasn't buying at $1.10. Here, settling in, it seems like there's some resistance and some support around the $1 mark, but that's it. That's it. Uh, we, we pick up a couple of pennies of appreciation only to give it back, but it's the give back that I want to bring to your attention with regard to the resilience in the company. Is there buying out there that I am unprevy to? Could be. Um, I know I'm prevy to my buys and I'm buying on the dip. When I see a dip in a Duro four, five, six pennies, I'm buying. And I'm usually buying in 5,000 share blocks right now. So if there's nobody buddy out there with regard to the blue ocean that exists with the Duro at this point, so be it. I'll, I'll operate on an island. I'm, I'm used to it. All right. My current position is 110,000 shares of Aduro Clean Technology. I feel that's important to disclaim to my grander audience. I should have provided the disclaimer up front in the video, um, but I, I am employed by Aduro. I am paid by Aduro to provide awareness to a company that has no awareness currently. Um, there's a lot of us trying to provide that global awareness, but I think what really gets most people attentions is the mainstream media. And I think Aduro is ready to sit in front of a CNBC uh, exclusive and offer their story. I think they're ready. Uh, if that ended up happening, I think the exposure would blow out the window. I, I think we would see a company re-rate instantaneously. And it's that very re-rate that I don't, don't put any focus in on now. 
but just put into the inevitable category when looking at valuing the company. Um, this weekly remarks, guys, is uh, important to continue to talk about my perspective on the company. I try not to be redundant on what we've already known through the few social media creators that offer a direct content. But my closing remarks in this, I always have a theme and what I'm trying to convey in my Aduro videos, and that is we are in the build-out phase. The build-out phase could take multiple months. Will there be catalyst over the next months and years to the positive? Um, could there be negative developments in the company? I don't know. As we evolve, we will continue to track those developments carefully. We will continue to evaluate um, the company's progress and ensure that we feel somewhat confident that they're on track medium to longer term in the future, as I do contend, as I talked about in this video, uh, is the toughest to evaluate. I don't believe in telling the future, but I tell you what, the game in investing is to put what we know about past, present, and future aligned to forecast where and speculate on where a company could be one, two, five, and 10 years down the line. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this weekly update on Aduro Clean Technologies. All disclaimers are provided in the description for you to review, peruse, see where my loyalty lies with my with regard to my own personal investment in this company. Uh, I'm bullish long. There will be no selling over the next couple of years. There will be no selling over the next the build out. Um, I didn't mention to you guys, I added 5,000 shares back um, from the initial 10,000 of tax sale that I had uh, at the end of last year to make some room for some tax purposes. I've added half that position back already. So just to show how bullish I am on the position and where my loyalty lies, I think that's important. Guys, if you enjoy the content, I'd invite you to subscribe to the Independent Investor channel, hit the notification bell. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. If you think I've struck up a discussion point, please share that in the description. I invite you to come and be part of the community, whether or not you're looking to take notice of this company or invest in the company uh, is totally up to you. What I'm trying to avoid is people out there that miss the boat on this opportunity and, and, and deem this as one of the greatest investing opportunities that I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, and to look back and say, man, where was I when a Duro Clean technology was introduced to the market? That's the very void and the niche that we're trying to provide on the Independent Investor Channel. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.